Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today, and I've just finished the recording and mixing of my new song here in GarageBand on iOS. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the finished product and take you through the mixing and automation and volume and effects decisions that I made completing this song here in GarageBand. Let's go. Okay, here we are in GarageBand taking a look at all of the tracks here and if you're not familiar with these and you want to see how I made these, I have videos on the drums, the guitars and the vocals which you can check the links for down below. But just a quick recap, we've got Anders, our drummer, who is providing the drums up the top here. We then have three guitars and our bass. We then have some backing vocals here, which are just a couple of gang vocals at parts of the song. The lead vocals there are muted, that was my original lead vocals. My re-recorded lead vocals are there on that track, and they were all converged from the track below. So, still have a little bit of cleaning up just to get rid of those, but they're not doing any harm in there right now. We then have all of the background vocals and the vocal doubles. So, we've got our two background vocals here, our left and right, and then we have our lead double left and right as well. So you'll see at the start here that I have started the song just before the start of the first bar and the first bar is bar seven because I had a little bit of a, a intro there that eventually wasn't part of the song. So what I've actually used here is the clip gain. So if we tap on that and we go to settings, you can see there that the gain for this one is up 12 dB. So I really wanted the guitars to start strong. If we then go to the next clip, the gain's back to zero. The reason I've done that as opposed to automation is I wanted to do that early on in the mix process. And once you go to automation, as you'll see over the side here, you get these yellow sliders, which means we can no longer adjust the volume on the mix uh, on the fader. We have to then use automation, which I'll show you all about the automation as we get into that in this video. So the guitar tracks then are quite static throughout the whole mix. We've got a nice level on those. I did some compression. I won't show you all the details of that, but just to show you where to go in to do it, if we tap on the little mixer icon up there, here's all of our plugins and settings. So you might be familiar with this screen. You might also know that if I tap on plugins and EQ, I can then go in and have full control over what actual plugins are on this track. We've only got a noise gate and a compressor. On this one, I haven't even done any EQ because I used a lot of the amplifier settings which is part of the new tone collection in GarageBand to actually record those guitars. And again, if you wanted to see all about that, jump into the guitars video and take a look. But the beautiful thing about plugins, which we'll get to as well, is that we can actually add additional ones. So you can see there, we've got a spot there we can tap and we can add in a new plugin if we wanted something different on there. So we'll go back out of that one now and close down our plugin window. So once again, there's our three guitars and our bass track. If we zoom in there, you can see they're pretty static until we get to this part here. And this is the little interlude between the first two parts of the verse. And all I wanted to do is that same trick again to go in here and just boost up the gain a little bit on each of these. So I think I've put them all up about 4 dB. Yep, round about that on the actual clip. And the same with the bass. And that's just to give it a bit of a drive. So if we go through this section, you'll hear that between the verses, when the vocals cut out, the music just lifts a little bit and then goes away again. So let's listen to that. If that crusty dean made them all declare a major. How is this real? What? So you can hear there that not only does it go from the palm muted guitars, but so you can see the waveform increase, but we also wanted just a little bit of a dB boost there to further enhance the sound on that track. Okay, this split here is just me re-performing part of the bass track. So that was just part, we won't move that. That was just part of the tracking process. And as we continue on, same thing again there, another split just when I was tracking. We have the same thing here for the guitar. So that split there was just where I wanted to re-record a part. So that's the beauty again of multi-track recording and recording in GarageBand is that if you make a mistake or you want to do another part again, you don't have to do the whole track. You can do part of a track by uh, what we call punching in. And that just means putting the, 
the, the record head there and then hitting record. And you saw me do that in the vocals video if you wanted to check that out. And right at the end here, this is where our automation comes in. So we did need to use, even though we used the clip gain for a lot of our automation, we did need to actually use automation lanes in the end because we needed to fade out these guitars. So if we listen to what that sounds like, I'll play it first and then I'll show you how we did that. And that's it. And if you heard the original version, or you can trust me if you haven't, um, what you heard at the end there was all of the amp hums and noises. So when you're playing a loud, crunchy, distorted style guitar, it sounds good until nothing's playing. And then it just sounds like a whole bunch of feedback and hum and distortion, which is not exactly what you want, especially right at the end of a song. So I wanted all of those to fade out. So how do we do that? We used automation. Let's show you that now. So to access automation, we'll just tap on one of these tracks that has automation and we'll hit, not surprisingly, automation. And what you can see here is we have our automation envelopes. So this is just telling each track what to do with the volume. And the reason that over here the volume faders are now yellowed out is that we can't adjust these now because all of our volume adjustments have to happen here. The reason for that is you can see here it goes down to zero. If we try to push, if we were back here and we try to push this volume down, it would say, I can't go any lower than zero dB. That's why we can't use the faders, we have to use automation. But it's no problem. The only tip I'll give with that is leave automation till the absolute last. So I didn't, I left these guitars in here sounding horrible at the end until literally about 10 minutes ago when I added these automation uh, envelopes in here. So I won't show you all of these, but this one's probably the most interesting because what it actually does is you can see the volume there, it ticks along at that volume level. When we come to this section here, it actually jumps up in volume. So this last chord, I wanted to ring out a bit louder and then it goes down, 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 down. So to add in automation, we put on our, we, we take off our lock, the protection, and we can just add in points here. And then you can drag, like if we take off the lock, we can either drag the points themselves to create ramps like that or we can grab in between to pull up and pull down entire sections like that. So I'm going to undo those because I do not want those in my automation. And one more undo. There we go. So that's how I created these automation points here. So let's mute, not mute, let's solo this track and you'll hear what happens with this guitar at the end. You'll hear the volume increase and then quite suddenly and then it will fade away at the end. Let's play this. And there's that nice fade out at the end. So just to show you how it did sound before, let's take the automation off. We'll tap on that. So automation is now gone. And without those automation changes, this is how the guitar did sound before. So you can hear there that we just had that background noise. It didn't fade out and we didn't have our uh, volume going up at the end there and that's probably the best example these distorted guitars sounded even worse they had that horrible hum at the end which is why they're also faded out like that so let's put that back on like so and get out of automation now so let's look at our vocals now I have re-recorded these lead vocals so if you watched the vocal recording video these are now new vocals and I did mention that at the end that I was probably going to re-record the main vocals and I did so the lead vocals that go through here, these chopped parts here are where I've literally just split and deleted the silences. So that's something that's good to do just to clean up your audio at the end is anytime you're not singing and you're just breathing into a microphone, it's a good thing to chop out and delete from your mix. Apart from that, we don't have any automation on this vocal. The levels are quite good um, and we didn't need to actually change anything throughout. We've got the compressor, which I'll show you, is set quite heavy. So here we come into our plugins and EQ for the vocal chain. So we don't have a noise gate on. There's our compressor settings. So the threshold's at minus 22 dB. We're at a 2.8 to one ratio. The attack's at 12 milliseconds and it's 100% mixed in there. The other things we have on here are a tiny bit of overdrive 
just to add a little bit of uh, harmonics and distortion to the sound. And we have some reverb here on the track. And you can see the reverb time is set to 0.9 seconds. So it's set to a, a quite a quick reverb because we want more of like a slap back delay kind of reverb sound. It's only at 13% wet, which means that it's only impacting 13% of the signal and 100% dry is going through there as well. And our EQ at the bottom here, I've actually boosted in a couple of strange places here. Um, what I was finding is that the vocal was sounding a little bit too hollow and, and sort of high-end and tinny, so I wanted to add in some mid-range to the vocal. So it's not something that you'd usually do, but I think because I had so many settings in here from the preset, uh, I wanted to just do something to shape that middle and give it a little bit more bite in the vocals. Backing vocals now, quite simple. I haven't really done much apart from, you can see, all of the chopping up here, and that was just changing some volumes. Specifically, one of the big volume things I changed was this line here because it's just part of this gang vocal where it says hey and I wanted to increase the volume so again I just use the clip gain volume to do that both on these ones here which is the uh, background vocals and also on the doubled vocals where it has that hey sound and that just creates a good gang vocal sound if we come to here and play it you'll hear what that sounds like Realize hey. it's just a movie. so well, I just wanted to boost those volume just for that particular word in there the one final thing with the background vocal is, again, instead of using an automation, I use the clip gain on this last section because at the end of the song, I've actually boosted it up 12 dB to the maximum because the background vocals go from being pure background vocals to actually being more part of the actual song, a part of the lyrics that you want to hear. So I'll play what that sounds like and just watch where it crosses over here. It goes from the 0 dB up to the 12 dB boost. Frat boys and clean clubs and it girls, there's no such thing as college. There's no such thing as college. There's no such thing as there you go. So you can hear that the volume comes up and yeah, could have probably made that with automation or even put it up a little bit louder, but that's the decision at this point. I don't promise I won't do that just before I master. But this is as close to the finished product as we have right now. Finally, our double. So I've mentioned the double before in the vocals, and all this is is a re-recording of the main lead vocal, but we have two of them. Uh, so we've actually got a triple here, and you can see they're at very low volume. And if we go in here and go to our settings, you'll see that one is panned hard left, this one, and this one is panned hard right. And they're at very low volumes throughout the whole song. In fact, I've just realized that one's compressor was knocked way up for some reason. Um, that's a good thing to pick up on. Not that it, not that you'll hear a lot of this, but it, yeah, it, it's still not a good idea to have it overloaded like that. So as I said, this is at a low volume, but what I did want is when it kicks into the chorus, I wanted it at a slightly higher volume. So if we go in again to these settings, you can see I've done the same thing here, and I've used this technique quite a lot throughout this song, just increasing the clip gain rather than having automation, just where one section needs to be slightly louder. Let's cue this track up and hit play, and I'm going to let you listen to the whole song. I'll try to scroll up and down as we go through to show you where some of these different parts come in with the changes in volume and automation as we go through. Okay, here we are. This is my new song, College. Let's go. I watched a movie back in 85 The kids were driven far away from home And they were left behind What is this place? Why is everyone so strange? That crusty dean made them all declare a major How is this real? Why are all these kids so drunk? Letterman jackets and a homecoming parade just make no sense Nerds and jocks and freaks and geek sororities I think they just made it all up There's no such thing as college There's no such thing as college There's no such thing as frat boys and glee clubs and it girls There's no such thing as college Marching band, they were on the field People watching 70s 
17 year olds play football like they give a damn The head cheerleader gives an A The campus radio, we're crossing live to some AV club team And as I sit, I wonder why they have to lie to me so much And then I realize hey. it's just a movie such thing as college There's no such thing as college There's no such thing as frat boys and glee clubs and it girls There's no such thing as college 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 there's no such thing as college. There's no such thing as college.